A bill to bar the president, governors and other public office holders from traveling abroad for medical treatment without court approval has been slated for second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill tagged Public Officers International Medical Treatment Trips Regulation Bill 2019 is sponsored by Sedgius Ogun, PDP Edo State. It has passed the first reading and has been scheduled for the second reading. That's what we're talking about right now. My guest is still with me, uh, Dr. Hassan and Obi Ejebo. Thank you very much for yeah, staying yeah, right. with us. All right. What's your take? Is this going to add value, restraining and putting, you know, checks and balances for medical yeah, treatment yeah, for let me, public it, office it, 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 Let me tell you the, the, the change uh, mantra. Uh, that brought us where we are. Just as if we are going to see Mr. President, who is not going to go on medical trip, foreign medical trip. At the end of the day, he ended up spending almost two and a half years on medical um, tourism. Tor no, we we'll call it tourism treatment because if it's tourism, we should be, we should be seeing and talking to our president within those periods. It almost put the whole nation under uh, great fear. And uh, coming out of that. This kind of bill is good in a in a senior climb that you have that capacity at home, and that they, we, we have we have to face the reality. Our medical world, as far as Nigeria is concerned, is largely there is a large brain drain of medical personnel from in droves that are moving out of the country. If you go to Lagos today, there is a there is a release that to 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 create employment, a massive employment into the Ministry of Health and Health Sector of Lagos State for medical attention. That is to say, it's, we have large lacuna already. This bill is good, but it's not going to really function, even if it is passed as a law. The, the, the number one, I wouldn't, in, in, in Nigeria, I, I bet it to tell you that this, the, the sponsor of this bill himself, Guan Hax, is his family domiciled in Nigeria as we speak? Is his children schooling in Nigeria? Does no, he have that? I, I, we don't have that part as, right as now, so it's not fair so, to speculate. No, 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 I'm not, I'm just trying to raise an opinion. Largely, every, at, at least I can tell you over 50% of the senators and House of Reps, largely... Well, let's, let's look at the bill itself. Yeah, it's a good bill. What's your take? You see, we have beautiful laws in Nigeria, but it's the enforcement possibility of it and there's a clause they should put the clause is you cannot go on medical treatment with with public funds that is it if it's your own money you want to go and spend it abroad fine but with public funds is the important clause so that they stop draining people and then also it is good to say that they should stay in Nigeria but which hospital would they go to a good question uh, but the bill is um yeah good question let's let's take it from that angle wouldn't it be better if we fix that we have a bill that works towards improving what we have creating more funding for the medical um, sector before looking to restrain people from traveling abroad if we have if you if you can go into say national hospital or loot and go for a free M MRI, go for and get everything diagnosed and get everything there. Nobody is crazy to spend waste dollars if you can have them. But it's so funny, these same doctors that we shown and we look down on are the same doctors they carry abroad and they do exploits. Why is that so? Because they have working tools. So until we can get working tools for them, then this bill, I don't know how they're going to enforce it. Okay, um, the bill, among other things, wants uh, public uh, office holders to get approval from the court. And the approval includes, you know, medical statements, lab reports, um, and it has to be a treatment that cannot be sourced locally. Yeah. Considering the history that we have of flouting successive court orders, do you see, should this bill pass and become law eventually, you know, there will be much compliance to it. I don't think the, the sponsor of this bill is a lawyer or has a detailed uh, uh, knowledge of work, how things work. You know, you don't go submit yourself to the court to get 
the the judgment order for you to for now say for you to now for a fundamental right you know he's proposing the, no, something no the, the, there are some things that should even not come in yes making it a positive measure of oh if you go this is what will happen you lose 10 years of your political life not like you you flout uh, um, the the um, the uh, the ICPC. traveling procedure or the icpc that you lose 10 years of your political lifeline if that comes in definitely that's a very good op op option but not you going who's going to go to court is it the are you going to talk to Mr. President, if he's in the best right position to go, and his, and his doctor is not in Nigeria, even uh, even you go to court, and while you are in a matter, the only available opportunity that you can get your 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 passport released is for you to claim that you want to go for medical treatment abroad. At the end of the day, it's going to give room for for countless uh, issues. So. We should not even, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a dead on arrival. Be I'm I'm sorry to say, it can't. On the, it, but let, let, let's it, flip it, this conversation on its mm -hmm. head. You don't seem to be too much uh, a fan of the bill, but let's flip this on the on its head and say, for instance, that we're able to get this bill and uh, it becomes a law restraining uh, medical tourism by public office holders. Mm -hmm. And then we're able to, in that El Dorado, you know, dragging that over 400 billion annually that we spent. The president um, mm -hmm. mentioned this sometime in 2019. Bring it back to the economy as it's been proposed by the bill. We have a history with accountability. What are the chances that this amount will be invested in the medical sector? You see, this money, these monies are not coming from one particular post. There's no post for medical tourism. I it agree. Is, but it is, in, it's it estimated is, that it we spend in, over 400 billion annually. No, what will happen is that if it works out, then that 400 billion, instead of going outside, at least 200 billion will be pumped into the Nigerian, um, Nigerian med med medical sector individually. That's the, oh, that's the converse yeah. of it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if it is pumped in and, and your, your hospital that was seen 50 million, and now you're seeing 200 million, the first thing you do is revamp. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Accountability. We know people will find a way to, you know, embezzle these monies and we might not see it as yeah. reality in equipment and uh, technology that we need. That is... I'm sorry. sorry. You, know, you know, most of this... Uh, um, hospital they go to abroad are privately owned hospitals. Mm -hmm. be, let's be clear about it. They are, not that there are people that are going to government owned hospital over there. Even in Nigeria here, if you approach the government hospital, the doctor will tell you, if you want to get the best of treatment, come to my private hospital. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, the general hospital is more like a conduit of a, a referral to the private hospital. At the end of the day, the rich always get the best treatment. So, because why? There is no discipline in the, in the health sector. We need a law. That is why, as I will also, also align, all this issue of health defense are exclusive listing issues that ought to be in our constitution. It must be criminalized for you to go on a medical trip with public fund. It is it also needs to also be clear that if you lied, on hold. Definitely what they should say is that you should be placed on hold before you travel. Meaning you have to sue an affidavit. If it's not being confirmed that your medical tripping is just for you to go abroad and be dancing salsa <laughs> or be doing anything that negates that real issue, that's what we have been faced with every day. People will lie on the premise, even on the ordinary cases that we are going to court on, on every day. If, uh, an accused can rely on medical well, black fitness and to 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 will to to escape uh, justice. So we need a whole uh, commitment, that zeal, that real governance. If you have it, all these other issues shouldn't have been on the front burner. 
Okay, so the Minister of Health, uh, still on the issue of uh, medical tourism, said the lack of medical equipment and poor working environment, as well as poor attitude. I need to mention that because we've had cases of people coming up to say uh, some of our health facilities, public health facilities, the health workers have very poor uh, attitude, and they are attributing all of this to the high rate of medical tourism uh, among Nigerians. Do you agree? I totally agree. Totally. I have a friend that has a private hospital and we go for walks every morning. Every day she's complaining about a nurse or a doctor. The, the Nigerian attitude to something that doesn't belong to them leaves, leaves a foul taste in one's mouth. When you go to general hospital, they would, they would be treating you anyhow. But I am proud to say that when I'm sick, it, sometimes I don't, go to, I don't go to private hospital. I go to Elegushi Health Center or Badoro Health Center. They are, they are very good. They are very, very good, up to date. They, they, they refer you and really you get your result and they attend to you and it's fine. That is, as, that is just for health center. Now, if we can, and they, and they are so polite. I don't know how they got it right. But if we can use that on the, in the health center, especially when women are in labor, you know they are in so much pain, they'll be crying, they'll be talking, the way they are treated. And you read stories of people coming for emergency and um, they, they, they don't get the good treatment they want. Okay, uh, on, on, on a closing, the Buhari's administration came on a matter of change and then now we are on the next level. If you were to make an assessment of the investment that they have done uh, to revitalize the health sector, um, where would you place them and what can they do better in, a, in the remaining uh, years that they have to govern this country? Well, if you can I'll, do I'll, that in yeah, one minute. Yes, I only advise Mr. President to look at the Lagos State template because recently Lagos is from you know pumping money into the health sector buying equipment we see it every day in the in care house and the a lot of revitalization so the federal government needs to have to revamp the primary health sector the at the at the local level also in every state the general hospital in every state must be properly funded nationally and we need a specialist hospitals also to that will attend to to to, to some sensitive uh, and uh, uh, medical uh, cases. So these are areas, and we need medical insurance for Nigeria also that will will insulate those uh, the the have not who cannot even afford it. Even if you have audio equipment, there should be some areas of intervention for those that cannot afford it at the same time. Your take, my take is. Hopefully, when the Dangote refinery comes on stream, we will stop importing fuel and then we will have free money to play around with. Now, this free money, one of the primary areas the government should pump the money into is health, because they say health is wealth. That's my own take. Okay, I must squeeze this one in, and it has to do with the level of punishment that has been advocated mm. for the bill that we talked about earlier, which is uh, going up for um, a second reading. And what it said was, uh, if you are found to have given false information, uh, the bill seeks 14-year jail term or 10 million naira as fine. Is that not a bit too harsh or... Uh, do you think it's very realistic? Quickly, please. Yes, I've already provided the best of solution. Let them follow the ICPC procedure. You lose 10 years of your political lifeline. No politician will want to lose. They can, they can die because of that <laughs> political power than paying that 10 million. They can pay the 10 million twice as you request. But leave their political lifeline out of it. They will tell you the truth. The 14 years you're saying, is it 14 years in incarceration or 14 years where? 14 years in prison. Mm -hmm. Seeing is believing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your thoughts on the program tonight. It's appreciated. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, that's uh, where we stop for this segment. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us.
Security agencies have been tasked to improve their capacity by building synergy in order to earn the trust of the public and tackle insecurity headlong. This was at a national workshop on interagency cooperation on security organized by the Ministry of Defense and the Defense Headquarters in Abuja. The Minister of Interior, Ralph Aregwe Shola, while describing a lack of trust and coordination as the bane of Nigeria's security architecture, urged those responsible for ensuring adequate security to tackle crime headlong through effective collaboration. This workshop certainly fits in into the broader agenda of the government towards repositioning and strengthening the nation's entire defense and security architecture and enabling the country to adequately cope with all prevalent and emerging security challenges. As Nigeria promote specialization through establishment of multiple services and agencies for enhanced skills and better coverage of operational domains. The various services and agencies must also integrate for real-time intelligence sharing, optimal utilization of resources, and enhance operational efficiency. Unarguably, Interagency synergy will continue to be an imperative effective management of a nation's defense and security, and Nigeria's case will not be an exception. For effective containment of the security challenges, we cannot overlook the need for leadership and synergy in the administration of our, man of our management of the resources which are institutional, material, and human that we deploy to neutralize the threats and their promoters. There cannot be any other way. We just must respect one another. We must seek to coordinate our activities. We must seek to collaborate. We must seek to cooperate. Security has become a core issue in national discourse in recent times. We are indeed facing new challenges with the changing dimensions of crime and criminal acts. We are dealing with insurgents, kidnapping, farmers through headers, clashes, armed robbery, armed banditry, and ritual killings, amongst others. There are three words. Cooperation, coordination, and collaboration. There's never too much of it. The more you get it, the more professional you become. The more you have it, the more you will enhance the security of the country. And remember that security today is not just the physical security. It will enhance people to go to farms so that you have food security. It will enhance people to be able to save money so that you can have hospital, you have health security. So a security is a human security. And with the cooperation, collaboration, and coordination, we will have that. There is a truth in the saying that when health is absent, wealth is useless. So yes, one would forgive anyone who seeks the best of medical service to enable them enjoy their wealth and their life. For public officials though, there is the question of the moral justification for using public funds to travel abroad for treatment in a country where the quality of healthcare is still very poor. There is indeed a need for real checks, especially when the number one citizen who should know better engages in said act. That said, the truth remains that modern diagnostic and treatment facilities, especially for major procedures, are unavailable or grossly inadequate in Nigeria. I would much rather our House of Representative members focus more on bills that will ensure our healthcare sector is adequately funded with improved facilities across all public hospitals. I am of the opinion that medical tourism thrives not necessarily because our medical personnel are not competent, but because they lack the necessary tools to do their job well. That is my take tonight. As always, many thanks for your time with us on the program. It returns same time on Monday. Bye for now and have a lovely weekend.